Hey, honey, what's for dinner? What's for dinner? I don't know. Every man for himself up in here. Hey, honey, what's for dinner? <sighs> I, I don't even know. Do you dread that question? Meal planning is key. Hey guys, welcome to Crystal Clear Ideas where we are diligently planning towards success and this is Meal Planning 101. In this video, we're gonna talk about why it's so important to meal plan, how to get started, and exactly what are we planning for? How long? So let's go ahead and dive into some of my tips and tricks and the steps that I go through when I actually plan for meals. Meal planning is so important because if you know exactly what you're cooking, then you won't dread that question that we had in the beginning that our family members are always asking. But then also, you will actually be prepared. Haste not, waste not. So when you actually take the time to map out your meals, map out what you're going to be cooking, then you get an opportunity to maximize all of the food that you have in your pantry and your fridge and your freezer, and you can minimize the waste. So let's go ahead and dive into my first step of what I do when I actually meal plan. So first thing I do is I decide how long I want to meal plan for. Now this depends on everybody's circumstances and situations. If you have a large family, you may want to minimize the amount of time that you're planning for meals just so that you won't waste a lot of food. Um, if you are a person that is truly busy, you may want to actually plan for the month. So what I do is I actually plan for the month. I know individuals that plan for the week and they plan every two weeks. Some people plan based off of their pay, pay schedule, when they get paid and how often. And some people just plan so that they don't have to worry about it. It is all done. So number one, decide how long do you want to plan for? Two is that you want to begin by shopping your stash. You will actually get an opportunity to see where I look into my pantries, I look into my cabinets, I look into my refrigerator, and I actually see what items do I already have on hand. This will prevent you from rebuying things that you already have. It will actually get you an give you an opportunity to use what you have on hand to create meals and it will actually help you to come up with some ideas of things that you could use what you have for when it comes to planning out your meals and figuring out what's for dinner. So that's number two, shop your stash. And you will actually see me doing that. I get an opportunity to go through my pantry, go through my cabinets, and go through my refrigerator and freezer just to see what I already have on hand. You may even wanna jot some things down as to not forget when you actually get a chance to sit down and map out what your meals are gonna be. Shop your stash, boo. Save them coins, okay? Another thing that I actually love to do, which is tip number three, is make sure that I actually have a sheet of paper or even a magnetized notepad in my kitchen or my refrigerator. 
where I can actually jot down different items in my kitchen that I'm missing or things that I need in order to complete a meal. I'm gonna actually show a picture right here of what that looks like in my kitchen. And what I do is I actually jot down things that I run out of while I'm cooking or if I'm watching Food Network or an idea pops into my head about a meal that I wanna make, I can actually have something close by and jot it down right there in my kitchen. I highly recommend that you get an opportunity to do that because it makes things so much easier. And that way I can see what I have on hand and make sure that I replenish the things that I have used up. Another tip that I also love to share is making a reference guide of all of the meals that you actually make. I actually created one on my channel right here. I'm gonna link it in the cards. And when you get an opportunity, take a look at that video after this one. But I had a blast creating a meal planning reference guide. And all I did was take a look at all of the meals that I've created, things that I know my family loves, guilty pleasures like soups that I make from scratch or a gumbo. And I actually document and write down, create a list of all of the meals that I love, that my family loves, and even some crock pot meals that will be easy for me to make or guilty pleasures. And that way I can have a reference guide when it's time to meal plan. When you have a reference guide and you sit down to meal plan, it's not like you're trying to drum up exactly what you wanna cook. You have a reference. You can go back and forth to that and plug things in. And I always am using that while I'm meal planning in case I come up with a blank and have no idea what I want for that day. So that is tip number three. Make sure that you have a reference guide and make sure that you have something in your kitchen where you can actually jot down things that you're missing or items that you may need to create a meal. Tip number four. Tip number four is to think of meals that you can make with what you already have. You've shopped your stash, you've made a list, you've gotten your ideas down. Think of some of the items that you can actually create with what you already have. That saves money, it actually saves time, and gas because you don't have to go grocery shopping if you have some items on hand, but it prevents you from buying things that you already have and you won't waste food. So I always love getting an opportunity to think up some ideas of things that I can make with what I have on hand and y'all, Pinterest is your friend. If you cannot figure out what to make with coconut milk and some chicken, you can go on Pinterest, type in those ingredients and voila, a meal at your service. So I love Pinterest because it gives me an opportunity to try new meals, try new uh, recipes, and I also get an opportunity to switch things up for my family, you know, give them a shock because they'll be like, hmm, when did she come up with this? Pinterest is your friend. So make sure you utilize that as a tool when you are meal planning as well, and I love it. The last thing you guys that you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and start mapping out your meals document them in your planner. There are two sections that I know of that I usually like to meal plan. The first place is the place that I always meal plan, which is my monthly section in my household planner. But you may also want to use your pre-planning guides in the front of your planner to document your meals as well. If there are other places that you use in your planner to document your meals, comment down below because I would love for you to share some of the tips that you use and some of the places that you document your meals so that we can all learn and grow together. Before you actually get an opportunity to get out that paper, that pen, and just start writing meals ideas down into the boxes and plugging them in, you do want to take note of three important things. The first thing you want to take note of is activities, events, or plans that you have that will prevent you from cooking. So for example, sometimes you may be invited to a wedding, you may be on vacation, you may have a date night. On those type of occasions, most likely you may not be home to cook. And so you want to make sure that you document those and that you don't put a meal down in that day or space because most likely you won't be able to prepare it for that day because you will be out. And so make sure that you document those because that way you'll get an opportunity to have an idea as to how many meals you actually need for the month. It may not be as many as you think. Second tip 
is that you want to make sure that you give yourself a break. There may be days that you don't feel like cooking. I personally map out the days that I'm not going to cook. I may... I love to make sure that my family always has a home cooked meal prepared, but that doesn't mean that your girl is going to be standing over the stove every day. Yes, I need a break. So what I do is I go ahead and pencil in some of those days that I know I will not feel like cooking. Maybe I made a huge meal earlier in the week. So we may have a day where every man is for themselves, which means that they go ahead and do what they know. Find whatever they can find in the kitchen to fill that belly. You know what I'm saying? Another thing, though, is if you have smaller children, you may not be able to do that. So another thing that you want to consider is leftovers. That is number three. Leftovers are your friend. Two ways I actually use leftovers is this. The first way is if I make a huge meal, let's say pulled pork from scratch, I know that it takes my family about three days to complete that meal. So what I may do is plan to create or make that meal on a Monday, put it together, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll have those leftovers. And at that time, in case I don't wanna have pulled pork sandwiches every day for four days, I could actually half the meal and repurpose some of that meat. We can have carnitas. So that is a way that I am creative with the meals, but I'm still using what I already have on hand to make something different, to repurpose it. The second way I use leftovers is freeze them. Hey, it's leftovers, but you don't have to have it tomorrow. You can have it next week. So you can go ahead and put that meal together, prepare it, freeze half of it, put it in your freezer, and then the next week when it's time for leftovers, you can pull that down, defrost it, warm it up, and serve it to your family like it's fresh. And I don't know about you, but leftovers always taste better the second day. I have really enjoyed getting an opportunity to share my process with you guys when it comes to meal planning. Don't miss out on the next video for Meal Planning 101 because that will be the last segment or the part two of this video where you will actually see me pull out my planner that's right behind me and map out my meals for the month of August. I cannot wait to share that with you. If there were some tips and tricks that you use that I didn't mention in this video, comment down below and leave them for all of the Bling Squad members so that we can all learn and grow together. I would love to see what you guys are doing when it comes to meal planning. Make sure that you thumbs up this video and make sure you comment down below or even drop your gem so that I know you made it. And if you are new, welcome to the Bling Squad. Go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can join the Bling Squad. We will be so excited to have you and I will see you all in my next video. Happy planning. Bye guys.